we introduced the so-called critical points, okay? So that was the, the main thing. So critical points are the possible candidates, possible candidates, possible candidate for the maximum and the minimum. And this is your job in this chapter to find them. So there are uh, two places that you're going to look for it. Uh, this is where f prime of c is equal to the zero. You know that f prime of c is the slope. So this is where the slope of a tangent line, uh, where the tangent line is going to be horizontal. And when f prime of c does not exist, when we say the slope does not exist, in that case, that line is vertical. So this means there is a sharp corner here, okay, because the, the tangent line happened to be horizontal, like the one that we did on the top here. You see, we have a sharp corner over here. So a frame of C does not exist, so we get a vertical tangent line. And if it's happened to be zero, so we get a horizontal one. At this place, we have a minimum, and at this place, we have a maximum. So that we have some evidence to believe that we may be able to find the max and the min. So we give you an example of how we're going to find it. You know, basically a function would be given you just find derivative of the function. Most of the time it's a polynomial, but then it's going to be a radical function. It's going to be a tricky one, okay? But otherwise, most of the time a polynomial. So we're going to continue. Now we know what we are looking for. So you got these critical points, critical numbers. So the question is, how are we going to classify? that at this number C, whether you are going to have a maximum or you are going to have a minimum. The order of your book is not good, but eventually you get to what I'm going to talk about it. Remember we define two types of maximum and the minimum. We have a relative one, which is in a small area, in your town, in your city, and the absolute one. Absolute is going to be the largest value of the value function, okay? Absolute minimum is going to be the smallest value and the absolute maximum would be the largest one. So uh, what we are going to do is absolute max and absolute min is easy to find. So I will take care of that one first, okay? A relative max relative means needs more attention, okay? So in your book, they talk about the relative max and the mean first, then go to the other one, but it's not going to be a good one. So this is the way we have to do it. So we are basically in this section tonight. Okay, at the end of tonight, we should be able to cover everything. But the sections are going to be the same, but the order must be of the, of the following, okay? So let's do it. This is going to be tonight. Well, so we are going to go with, you know, we, we talk about a little bit of the 3.1 the other night, but we are not done. And so we are going to go through these two sections. Okay. And our order is a little bit different, but eventually we get to the order of your book, which is not a good one. Okay. So first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to find absolute max and absolute min. Okay. So uh, how are we going to locate? Okay, this is going to be one of those problems that I talk about. Okay, so we want to locating, if you like, locating absolute. Okay, absolute maximum or minimum, we call them absolute extrema. Extrema, okay. Absolute extrema of a function, of a function, but you can do it only on closed interval, okay? On closed interval, closed intervals. If you have a closed interval, we talked about the other night too. If you have a closed interval, it's guarantee. It's a guarantee that you are going to get one absolute maximum, one absolute minimum, okay? So we are going to look for this one. You may wonder, oh, what would happen to the open interval? You have to wait at the end of this chapter to answer that question. Okay, so in order to do it, we are going to use the, the following theorem. This is great theorem and they make things so easy for us. This theorem will guarantee that 
okay the theorem would guarantee that you are going to get one absolute maximum one absolute minimum this theorem was approved by Cauchy so that's why we like to call it Cauchy theorem Agustin Cauchy French mathematician okay what is the quotient theorem Cauchy theorem Cauchy theorem will tell you that if your function if you have a function which is only continuous on a closed interval if a function is continuous on a closed interval there is a guarantee that that function would have one absolute maximum and one absolute minimum that's it you see so nothing to worry about if a function okay if a function if a function f is continuous it must be continuous is going to be continuous okay continuous but on a on a closed interval okay is going to be continuous on the closed interval on the closed interval closed interval let's say a comma b okay if uh, this is going to be the case then there is a guarantee then uh, the function will have a maximum the minimum then uh, there is a then there is a number c okay there is going to be a number c inside okay inside the interval inside the, the interval inside the interval such that okay such that this f of c f of c is going to be what is an absolute extremum an absolute absolute okay extremum absolute extremum means it can be a maximum or it can be a minimum that's it so you don't need any that's why we discuss this one now rather than later because we don't need anything else okay there are some other things that you can do that's why i like to talk about this one right now so you're not going to be confused in future but the question is you see this theorem is a very nice one this theorem will just give you the news the news that yes there is a c such that f of c is going to be absolute extremum but it's not telling you how we're going to find the c okay but we know the candidates so how are we going to find this c this is how we're going to find it okay the candidate is going to be going to be critical values so in order to find it now the action okay that was the result how are we going to find that okay now in order in order to locate that absolute max and limit, to locate, okay, locate the absolute, the absolute uh, minimum, okay, minimum and the absolute maximum, okay, absolute maximum. Okay, absolute maximum of the function f of the function function f on that closed interval that we talk about it. This is what you're going to do step by step. Okay, what's going to be a step one? Step one, you find the critical values or critical numbers. You know that you find the derivative of the function, you let it equal to the zero. So step one, find, okay, find all critical, critical numbers. Okay, find all the critical numbers, critical numbers of the function f, of the function f. 
How we're going to do it? Basically, you solve the equation of f prime of x equal to zero. So you find the f prime of x, you let it equal to zero. Those values that we did before, uh, that we call it horizontal tangent line. Okay, so that's going to be step one. Any question? What's going to be step two? Step two, remember the domain of this function is closed interval of a and b. When you find these numbers, you have to check. Make sure that these numbers are going to be in your domain. If the number is going to be in your domain, you accept it. If these numbers are not going to be in your domain, you reject it. If you accept it, you drop it back to the function and you find the value of the function. Because that would be this f of c that we talk about it, okay? So what you're going to do is step two. A step two, you are going to evaluate, okay? You are going to evaluate the, the function f, evaluate f at what? At those numbers, at all, critical. Okay, critical numbers that are going to be inside, that are inside, okay? Or in this interval. If they are not, ignore it. And this is where you probably are gonna make a mistake. Because if you don't reject the one that's not going to be inside, and then you find the value of the function, you just keep going, and you may declare it to be a max and the mean, which is not true. It must be in the domain of the function. Okay, that's going to be a step two. Any question? So you may get a bunch of numbers, okay, when you put the C, if you like, into this. These are the candidates. The max and the mean may be from this form. But there is another possibility that we check it before. Since the interval is closed, the max and the mean of the function can happen at A or B2. So to make sure that you are not going to miss anything, you are going to evaluate F of A and F of B. Okay, so the value of the function at the end point of the interval. So you are going to find or evaluate you are going to find f of a and f of b. That's going to be a step three. Okay, that's your step three. So you get a bunch of numbers. You get some numbers in part two and some numbers, uh, two numbers in part three. You compare them together. The largest number, the smallest value is the absolute minimum. The largest value is the absolute maximum. And you're done. You see, because you know it from the theorem that we talk about it, that they are the candidates. Since they are the candidates, so you compare them together. The smallest one is going to be the minimum, the largest one is going to be the maximum. So that would be a step four, compare them together. Okay, you compare the largest. Okay, that's it, the largest value obtained Okay, largest value obtained in, in part, okay, in parts two and three, two and three. The largest value is going to be is the absolute maximum, absolute maximum. Okay, and the smallest value and the smallest value is the absolute minimum, and you then is the absolute, absolute minimum. And with that, you see very, very easy test. Very easy test. We are going to have two more tests in future, but this is the easiest one. Right? It can be used only to find the absolute maximum or absolute minimum. In application problems, uh, this is the one that we're going to use. And you want to find the absolute maximum or absolute minimum. That's it. We need example. Any question? One, two, three, four.
this is how you're going to do it. You find the derivative of the function, you let it go to zero. You have done this one several times before. So you find the critical numbers. Then you check if the critical numbers are inside, you accept it and you drop it back into the function. You find f of c, for example, of those critical okay, numbers. If they are not, you throw it out. Then you find f of a and f of b. You get a bunch of numbers, three numbers, four numbers, five numbers. You compare them together. The smallest number is the minimum. The largest number is the maximum. And you're done. That's it. I should give you an example. Any question? So, just a couple of examples. The examples are mostly, uh, okay, mostly polynomial types. So, we just uh, give you a polynomial type. That's it. Example. Uh, you are going to be asked, find, find the absolute. Remember, it's not a relative absolute. Find the absolute, absolute extrema means the max or the mean, and the mean. Find the absolute extrema of this function. Of the function is going to be f of x equal to, f of x equal to the x cubed minus 12x, and you want to do it on this interval, the close interval of negative three comma one. That's it. <clears throat> okay. So we want to find the absolute max, absolute minimum of this function on a given close interval. That's it. Four steps. Are you ready? Solution. Make sure, remember the domain that you're going to consider is going to be this close interval. So start, make a note for yourself. This is the domain. Okay, this is going to be your domain. So find f prime of x. Step one, f prime of x. It's going to be equal to, that gives you 3x squared minus 12. Double check the derivative, because that's a crucial part of the problem. Just make sure you don't miss it. Okay, let it equal to the zero. And solve this equation, 3x squared minus 12 equal to the zero. It can be done most of the time by factoring method. In this case, you can move the 12 to the other side. So that gives us a 3x squared equal to the 12. Okay, so x squared is going to be 12 over 3, which is 4. So your x would be positive negative 2. Okay, that's it. So these are the, your candidate for the, okay, your candidate for the critical numbers. So the critical numbers, okay, critical numbers are going to be what? Are going to be negative two and negative two and two. So that's going to be the step one. Any question? Step two. So, um, sorry. Yes. It's, do you make the, you make the negative positive for the three? For the two, you mean? Four. Yeah, x squared equal to the four. So x is- No, you, you plugged in negative three into the equation, right? No, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Step by step, you're not done. Okay, so that's a step one. A step one, you just find these critical numbers, okay? so. In order to go to the, you see, do it step by step. That's a step one. Find the critical numbers of the function. A step two, evaluation of the function at the critical numbers. But you check to see if they are going to be inside this interval. Okay, checking. So we are going to check. Okay, you know, on the test, you just do it right away, but we test it. You see, the interval is a negative three and one. Negative two is inside, okay? Negative two is inside, but two is not. So x equal to the negative two is in D. So you are going to accept this one. But x equal to two is not, is not in D. So you are going to reject this one. So the only critical values that are going to carry for this interval is going to be what? Is going to be negative two only. 
that's a very crucial point that don't take anything extra because the domain of the function is negative three and one. And sometimes you may reject both of them. It doesn't matter, reject both of them because there are some other steps that you got to have. Okay, any question? So the first part, you're going to find the critical values. In the second part, okay. What is that? Yes, we find the derivative of the function. We just use the, okay, we use the power rule, yes. It's a derivative, you know, it's a derivative of a polynomial. We're just using the error. The domain is given to you. They said, find it on the closed interval R, you see. If it's not going to be given to you, the domain of this function is all real numbers, remember? Because it's a polynomial. Mm -hmm. But it's given to you on this interval. So you have to stay yes. on this interval. I'm, I'm just a little confused when you have the checkpoints. How do you like tell if the negative two is in the domain and the two is not? Domain is everything between negative three and one. Oh, okay, so everything's Let's in check, Yes, negative two is between negative three and one, but two is not. Oh, I see, thank you. Okay, any more question? It's very crucial, okay, to get this one done. Because if you don't check, you are going to have an extra number. You may arrive at the fact that you get the maximum at this extra one, which is not true, because it must be in the domain. Okay, any question? Now we can go to step two. We know that this is a valid number. Drop it into the function. Okay, find f of negative two, okay? So this is our first candidate f of negative two is going to be our first candidate. Okay, so we go to the function and we find f of f of negative two. Sometimes you may have to reject both of them, it doesn't matter. Because always you have the end point because it's close. Okay, go to the function, substitute f of negative two, this is your function. Carefully substitute, it's going to be negative two. Negative two cube minus 12 times a negative two. Negative two cube would be a negative eight, and this is going to be a positive 24. So the result is 60. You highlight it because this is your first number. F of negative two. Okay, F of negative two is going to be equal to what? Is equal to the 60. This is the first number. Any question? So that's the step two. Evaluation of the function at what? Evaluation of the function at the critical, critical points. Step three, evaluate the function at the end point of the interval, okay? So we go to the step three and we get, we know, we, you will see later on that I'm going to write everything in a short form, but let's do it. Okay, so we are done, you see? We find the critical, critical numbers of the function. We tested to see if they are inside this interval. Every number which is inside, we find the, the value of the function. So we have to go and find f of a and f of b. a is a negative three and then b is one. So the next step is going to be, what is going to be, okay, what is going to be f of negative three and what is going to be f of one. Okay, f of one. Go to the function again, substitute to get this. Okay, we go to the function, f of negative three equal to, the function was x cubed minus 12x. So it's gonna be negative three to the third. Okay, minus 12x, 12 times a negative three. Negative three to the third cubed is gonna be negative 27. Okay, and negative, negative positive, so that gives positive 36. The result would be nine. So you highlight this one, this is another number. F of negative three is going to be equal to, equal to nine. Okay, question. So uh, the other number is F of one. So we find F of one. So that give one to the third minus 12 times one. One to the third is one, one minus 12 is negative 11. So f of one is going to be negative 11. 
That's it. So this is evaluation of the function at the end point of the interval. So check to see how many numbers do you have. You have two numbers here, nine and negative 11, and you have one from the critical value. Now compare them together. See, you compare the following number. Compare, what do you have? You have f of, uh, okay, f of negative two. You have f of uh, negative two, which is, uh, okay, what's f of negative two? f of negative two is 16, is 16. f of negative three is nine. And f of one is equal to negative one. You compare these numbers together. The smallest one is the minimum, and the largest one is the maximum. Is it negative one or ne negative 11? Sorry? Negative 11, you said negative one. For oh, F1? I'm sorry. Yes, you are right. Very good. So compare them together. What's the smallest value? The smallest value? Negative 11. Negative 11. So we say declare that the minimum of the function, okay, it's absolute minimum, is a negative 11. Largest value, the maximum. 16. 16. What you do, in fact, you identify the range of the function. You see the value of the function are going to be between negative 11 and 16, and you're done. You see very nice tests. You will see when we get to the relative one, we have quite a lot to do. But for this one, no just said three steps and we usually do it in a short form I'm going to show you how we're going to I'm going to write it down for you okay any question so the point is that part checking make sure you check because if you don't check you see I have a f of negative two if you don't check it you are going to bring an extra number because you have to find f of two in that case so you have f of two and these three numbers so the, everything may be, may be quite different in that case, okay? So make sure you don't, uh, don't lose it if you like, or don't make uh, any mistakes. Okay, so this is going to be the first one. Any question? I'll give you another one to see how I'm going to do it uh, in a short form. This is the last part, you know, we can do it in a short form so that we are not going to lose any any numbers, okay? Already, it's gonna be a, just a polynomial type. It's very a standard question, nothing complicated about it. And as I told you, you get one on this test and one on the final, okay, for the absolute maximum. So uh, let's uh, give you another one, okay? Uh, to see what is going to be the next one. So this is the way we do it you know, in short form. So example, uh, the example is going to be, would like you to, to find, okay, find the absolute, let's say absolute uh, extrema, means max and the mean of this function, okay, the function is f of x, f of x equal to the two x cubed, Okay, 2x cubed minus 6x plus 1. And you want to do it on this interval. Okay, the interval is 0 and 3. Okay, we have a polynomial and we want to do it. Again, remind yourself that the domain is this one this time. Because the natural domain is all real numbers. Okay, solution. Remind yourself that this is going to be the domain. So when you want to compare, you do it. Okay, then uh, as usual, you have to find the critical number. So differentiate it. Derivative is nice, you know, function. So f prime of x, differentiate. Just the power rule. 3 times 2, 6. So 1 down would be x squared. Minus so 1 times 6 is 6. Okay, one down would be just six, and the derivative of one is zero. Okay, so that gives you six x squared minus minus six. Make it equal to the zero. 
f prime of x equal to the zero. So we have a six x squared minus six equal to the zero. It's like the, the previous one. So I move the, you have to solve this one. The factoring method is the one that we're going to use. So I move the six to the other side. So that gives me six x squared minus six. Okay, equal to the six. And the x squared is equal to one. So again, x would be positive negative one. Okay, so we are going to have two critical numbers. Critical numbers are going to be, okay, in this case, it's going to be negative one, negative one and one. So these are going to be your, okay, these are going to be your critical, uh, critical, critical numbers, okay? Any question? Now, quickly compare. So check. You see, if you check, the interval is zero and three. So as you can see, negative, negative one is not in this interval. So you can drop it. So the critical numbers is going to be only one. It's not always the case that you drop it, but in these two examples that I gave you, this would happen. Okay, this is the way we do it on the test. Uh, so the candidate from the critical number is one. You have to find the value of the function at one, at zero and three. This is the way we do it. We draw a chart. Okay, that's quick. So this is the x, and this is f of x. And your f of x is what? f of x is 2x cubed minus 6x plus, plus 1. So the numbers that we are going to check, the numbers are going to be the one from the critical value, we get only one. And the one from the endpoint is going to be zero and zero and three. You see, in this format, you will see the numbers quickly. And then, you know, you just uh, do it, uh, you do it right away to get this, uh, okay? To get your number, uh, your number right away, uh, okay? So this is going to be the uh, the case, okay? And so substitute uh, f of one substitute, so that give you two times two times one cubed minus uh, six times one plus one. So this is going to be two minus six, two minus six plus one. That give you a negative three. That's the first number. Okay, substitute the zero, 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 that give you one. So that give you zero plus one, which is gonna be equal to one. So this is the first number. This is the second number. Put uh, x equal to three, so that give you two times. Okay, two times uh, three to the third, minus six times three plus, plus one. Uh, three cube would be 27, so that give you two times uh, 27. Six times three would be 18 plus, plus one. Okay, two times uh, 57 would be 54. Okay, so that gives you 54. So it's equal to the 54 minus 18 plus, plus one. Okay, minus 18 plus one. Uh, so, you know, we can subtract it. We're just going to be 55 minus uh, 55 minus minus 18. Okay, so I'll make it 55 minus 18. And if you subtract it, that give you what? It's going to be 37. 37. Okay, so you have uh, you have three numbers to compare: negative three, positive one, and the 37. So the smallest value is the minimum. So the minimum value of the function is going to be negative three. And the absolute maximum of the function is going to be what? It's going to be 37. And you're done. So this is the way we write it down. It's easier. Get this, uh, this uh, chart format. I mean, you can do whatever you like if you don't like this one can use uh, any other method uh, to identify it. Uh, so uh, that would give you absolute maximum and the absolute minimum. Uh, of course, you know, the, the function can be, can be different. 
but in your case, uh, these are going to be the only functions that we are going to use, okay? It's just polynomial type. So we are not going to spend any more time on this one. And that would solve the, okay, the first problem of the absolute maximum. So we are done with the, okay, we are done with the absolute maximum and the absolute, uh, uh, absolute minimum. So the next step is going to be how we're going to find those, uh, okay, a relative maximum or a, or a relative minimum. That's going to be next, uh, next, next target to get this number two. Okay, any question? So that's our first, uh, uh, okay, our first problem, if you like, uh, to see what is going to be the, the case. Okay, what's the question? And now, so we always set a prime x equal to zero. Yes, we get the one. What's happen if both of the numbers are, okay, both numbers in? Nice, you get if both numbers are going to be in. I'll give you one, one more. You are going to find all the numbers. You see the, the possibilities are going to be, you may get the both numbers in or you may get both of them out, okay? So let me give you the one that you get both numbers in. Okay, so let's have another one. It's not the case that always the numbers will be out, okay? So let's give you another one. Uh, the other one is this one. Okay, so the same problem, but we want to find, uh, so uh, there you are. We want to, to find the absolute. Okay, find the absolute uh, uh, extrema, means the max and the b of uh, the function, okay. And this is going to be the function. The function is f of x equal to f of x equal to the x cubed minus 3x squared uh, minus 24x. Show you that sometimes you have to be patient. Okay, plus 5. And you want to do it on this closed interval. Closed interval is a negative 3 and 6. Okay, so it takes a little bit more time, but these are generally what you have. Okay, are you ready? Uh, make sure that you know the domain is in this case, negative three and six. So that's gonna be the solution. You remind yourself that you have a domain to consider. So this is gonna be the domain. The number must be between negative three and six. So go for it, step one. Find derivative of the function, let it equal to the zero. Okay, so we find the f prime carefully differentiated because the derivative is important. Just using the power rule to differentiate, three times one would be three, so that gives it three x squared minus two times three, six, six x, okay, minus 24. So that's the derivative of the function, okay? So we have to let it equal to the zero, so f prime of x equal to the zero, so we have to solve this equation, which is a three x squared minus six x minus 24 equal to zero. So we try the factoring, okay? You check to see if there is any common factor. What's a common factor in this case? Common factor? X. No. Three. It's going to be three, yes. The common factor is three. You cannot pull out the x because there is a 24 here. Okay, you know, you get rid of these three to be able to factor it further, okay? So pull out the three, so that give you x squared minus two x minus eight equal to the zero. Now we can continue finding two numbers with the product of eight, since it's a negative and a difference of two. Okay, if this is gonna be positive, this number is the sum. Okay, so it's gonna be three times, okay, three times, what is the number? Two numbers, product of eight and a difference of two. X minus four, X plus two. Excellent, yes, X minus four, X plus two. Equal to the, equal to the zero. Okay, so that gives us the, the result. 
Now you let each factor to be equal to the zero. Okay, you know that three equal to the zero never, because this is a number. It's a number, of course, x minus four equal to the zero, that give you x equal to four. So this is one number. And then the other one, x plus two equal to the zero, that give you x equal to the negative two. So your critical numbers, critical numbers are going to be what? Are going to be a negative two, negative two comma four. So this is going to be the critical number. Any question? So check to see if you are going to accept both of them. Okay, you check. When you check, you see the negative two is inside because it's between negative three and six and the four is also inside. So both of them are inside. So you check, you find out that it is going to be unchanged. Okay, so you have to carry two numbers. So the next step is going to be, you have to find the value of the function at negative two, four, and the end point, three and six. Okay, so we have to use four numbers. So get the chart and start working on it. That's it. So this is going to be my x and this is going to be the f of x. And the f of x is the function, which is x cubed minus three x squared minus 24x plus five. So the numbers that we have to use are going to be the critical numbers. So it's a negative two, four, and the end of the intervals, end points. So we have a negative three and six. Carefully substitute, simplify, and then compare them together to get your, your result. Okay, so I'm going to substitute. Use parentheses when you substitute, it's going to be negative two cubed. Okay, minus three times negative two squared, minus 24 times a negative two plus, plus five. Negative two cubed would be negative eight. Okay, negative eight. Negative two squared would be four, four times three, 12, minus 12. Okay, over here, negative, negative positive. So two times 24, that give you 48. Okay, 48 and the five. You can use your calculator if you like. So that give me a negative 20, negative 20 and the plus 53. Okay, uh, 53. So if I subtract it, that give me 33. So this is the first number that I'm going to consider. Okay, question. So we have four numbers, okay? So continue. We try the four, substitute again. So that give you four cubed. Okay, it's gonna be four cubed minus three times four squared minus 24 times four plus five. I have to take care of this one. And four cubed, four times four would be 16. 16 times four would be 64. So that gives you 64. Over here, four squared is 16. 16 times three, 48 minus 48. And uh, this is going to be minus, okay, 24 times, times four. Four times four, 16, that give me 96. Okay, 96. 96 plus, plus five. Okay, be careful, you know, you know that the power first when you're squaring to get these uh, numbers, numbers done. So this is going to be equal to, you know, again, you can use your calculator, 64 and five. This is the way I do it. It's going to be 69, and uh, this is going to be minus, uh, okay, minus uh, 14, and other than 44. Okay, and I subtracted, this is going to be negative. Nine out of 14 would be five. Okay, 75. 75 is going to be negative 75, the second number. Okay, it's just a substitution. Make sure that you do the algebra, all right? So two more numbers to go. Okay, we go with the negative three. Again, it's gonna be negative three cubed minus three times negative three squared minus 24 times a negative three plus, plus five. Okay, I just substitute the negative three. 
So negative three cube would be negative 27. This is going to be negative 27. And over here, negative three squared would be nine. That gives you negative 27 again. Okay, and this is going to be three times uh, 24. Negative, negative would be positive. So that gives you 70, 72. 72 and a positive five. Positive five. Again, simplify negative 27, negative 27 would be negative 54. Negative 54, and that would be 77. And if you subtract it, that gives you three. Okay, three and two. That would be 20, uh, 23. Okay, it's going to be a 23, and 23 would be a positive, positive number. Okay, so this is going to be the third number. Any question? So, you know, this you get more numbers and then more substitution. Uh, so, do the same to the 6. It's going to be 6 cubed in the function. Minus 3 times 6 squared. Minus 24 times 6 plus 5. You know, you may use your calculator. So, 6 cubed. 6 times 6, 36. 36 times 6 would be uh, 260. Minus uh, six squared would be thirty six. Uh, three times thirty six. Three times six eighteen. That give you one o eight. Okay, that give one o eight, and this is going to be minus twenty four times six. Six times four would be uh, twenty four. So that give you one forty one forty four. 144 plus 5. Okay, that's going to be the one. So again, you may use calculator if you like, or 5 and the 216 is going to be, uh, it's at 221, or it's going to be 221 minus, and if you add these two, 8, 12, okay, 5, so that give you the, the result. Okay, it's a 108 and I have 144. So four and eight would be 12. Okay, I get one. So that give me, okay, 256, I think that's one. Okay, so it's a 250, 252, 252. Okay, four and eight would be 12. I carry one, uh, that's going to be five and 252. 252 and you subtract it. So the result's going to be a negative. Uh, okay. So uh, the, the result going to be one out of two is going to be one and uh, negative 31. Negative 31 is going to be the one we are going to give you. The number is going to be easier to handle, but I just give you this so that you know how you be patiently you can you know you can carry on this problem okay any question now we get five numbers four numbers compare them together okay compare these numbers you have 33 negative 75 23 and negative 31 what's the minimum Minimum, the smallest value? Negative 75. Negative 75. And the maximum? Negative 33. 33 is going to be a maximum, yes. So that gives you the final, the final answer. Okay, so this is the most that you can know, that you can have. Yes, that's true. Okay, this is the most that we can have. Sometimes, you know, they give you so that you will drop one of those numbers like the one that I did, but uh, this is this is the full course if you like that you will have to use. But make sure you check it. You check. Uh, there is a there is a problem in your book sometimes that you may drop both these numbers. You see, it doesn't matter if you have to reject both of them. It doesn't matter. Remember, P 
because you have the endpoints. So even if you don't have the any critical number, but you have to carry on. You have to carry on, find the value of the function at the endpoints, because those would give you the, the maximum and the, and, the, and the minimum that you're going to have. Okay, so this close interval would guarantee that we have a maximum and the, and the minimum. And it would be very, very important when we get to the, okay, when we get to your uh, application problems for these, uh, for these and numbers. Okay, any question? So, we are done with the, okay, we are done with the uh, absolute maximum and the, uh, okay, and the absolute minimum in this case. So for the rest of the our argument, we can uh, we can focus on the relative maximum and the relative minimum. Remember, uh, absolute max, absolute mean are going to be the largest uh, value of the function on the entire okay on the entire domain, if you like. But uh, sometimes we may stay in a very a small area, if you like very small area and we consider the maximum local maximum and the and the local minimum we call it okay or the relative one so uh, for the rest of this uh, section if you like we are going to focus to see how we're going to find those the relative maximum and the relative relative minimum okay are you ready any question on this one so uh, you can't miss it okay you can't miss it it is going to be a straightforward argument and you get it, uh, you get it right away. Uh, so, so that will take us, uh, this is in, in kind of a 3.2, but how are we going to find uh, from now on? We are done with the absolute max, absolute mean. So how are we going to locate uh, relative maximum and the relative, relative minimum, okay? Let's give you introduction. Uh, we're going to do it. It takes a little bit more time, okay, but eventually we can find it. We are going to have two different methods, okay, and we may not be able to do both up, but we try to give you one of them. So uh, from now on, uh, we did the absolute maximum, so how are we going to locate, okay, how are we going to locating, if you like, that's a roadmap. Lo locating a relative maximum, Okay, a relative, a relative extrema. Relative extrema means the maximum or the minimum. Okay, so what's gonna be the plan for this one? In order to get the, through this one, uh, we are going to, I'll just give you a preview, then I do it for you. You see, uh, look at this, uh, this graph, just to get the idea of what I'm going to do. Okay, look at this one. As you can see, this uh, this function, if you like, this function would have a maximum here. Okay, that would be a maximum, and you have a minimum here. You know, it's gonna be the lowest point of the function for the time being. It's a relative, it's not absolute. Okay, and this is gonna be the maximum. So, uh, you already find this point, you know that the candidates are going to be critical numbers, because at these two points, the Okay, at these two points, the, the tangent line is going to be horizontal. Okay, so we can let f prime of x equal to the zero and solve it, and we get these two points. Okay, so you are done with the first step. The next step is going to be how we're going to determine which one is the maximum, which one is the minimum. This is calculus. Okay, everything must be connected to the okay, problem of a tangent line. Uh, look at this part. You see, in order to get to the maximum, the function is going up first, then it's going down. You see? So if you go up, if the value of the function goes up before this point, and then it's going down, this would be what? This would be a maximum. Okay, I can, you know, I can bring it out so they can see it. You see, if this is going to be the graph, so if you go up, 
then you go down. At this point, you get a relative maximum. Okay, so this is going to be relative, relative max. If it's going to be the other way around, if it's going to be the other way around, means if you go down first, then you go up. Okay, that give you what? That give you a relative. That give you a relative, relative minimum, relative mean. Okay, so that give you an idea of how we're going to do it. So you have to define what they mean by a function going up or the function going down. If the value of the function uh, would be such that the function go up, 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 we say this function is increasing. The function is increasing if you go from left to right because the smallest value are going to be on the left. If you go from left to right, the value of the function getting bigger and bigger. That's increasing. Uh, going down, we say the function is decreasing. So in order to get a relative maximum, before the critical value, your function must be increasing, and after must be decreasing. In order to get the minimum, before it must be decreasing, after must be increasing. So we have to take care of these ideas first. Okay, we have to give you a definition of a max increasing and decreasing and then be able to identify the function okay now again that would it can be done in algebra okay and we do it in college algebra sometimes but this is calculus in calculus everything depends on the tangent line so when we go up 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 you see if you consider the slope of the line in algebra is if the slope is positive the line's going up, up, up. If the slope is negative, you go down, down, down. So we can have something similar here. But the slope in calculus is derivative. So this is our, going to be our job, or this is just the indication. Before this point, f prime must be positive. If f prime is positive first and then negative later, you get a maximum. Up, down. If the f prime is negative before and positive after, that gives relative minimum. So at the end of this argument, we are going to have a test. Okay, we get the chart. We have to identify the sign of the f prime. So we're going to have a chart to determine this uh, okay, situation we're going to have, and we find the maximum and the, and the minimum. This uh, test going up, going down, it's going to be called first derivative test. You must know it by name. Okay, so we say we apply the first derivative test to get the relative maximum or the relative minimum. There is another one we call it, okay, second derivatives. So I have to prepare you. I, we have to, these are just a roadmap. So uh, what we are going to do, we are going to define uh, what is increasing function, decreasing function, we relate it to the f prime, and eventually we have a theorem that would take care of the relative maximum and the relative minimum for us, okay? So it's a nice method, not bad. Uh, you are not going to get time to get to the second one for your test. So you are not going to worry about it because you have only one test to use. When the, it's happened to be have the second one, the second one is sometimes easier. Then you have the option. But for the time being, no option. We just keep going with. Okay, so I have to give a couple of definitions. Okay, for those increasing, decreasing function first. And then eventually we get to this. And that would be the second problem. Okay, for next test and for the final. Okay, each section, one problem for the, uh, for the final. Okay, so let's get some definition first. Uh, the function to be increasing, decreasing. Uh, the function to be increasing, decreasing, we have a special name for it. We say monotonic function. So what is going to be definition of monotonic? Okay, monotonic functions. It's the same as you know in your book. Increasing, decreasing is a nice expression, monotonic. 
Now I'm going to define the up, 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 down, down, down. Okay, to give this idea, eventually we arrive at our test. There you are. Suppose you have a function. Suppose a function. Okay, function f is defined. Okay, it's going to be defined on its domain, on an interval, on an interval. I call it i. Okay, interval i. Okay, interval i. And now, and if you like, and get two points, x1 and x2 are going to be two numbers. Okay, they are going to be numbers, numbers in this interval. Interval such that, such that, okay, uh, such that f of, you see such that uh, if, uh, we go from left to right, if f of, if x1 is less than x2, then f of x1 is going to be less than, okay, or less than equal to, it doesn't matter less than equal to the f of x2, or just less than. So this means from left to right, you see the value of the function getting bigger and bigger. If this is going to be the case, then f is said to be, said to be uh, increasing and increasing Increasing function, function on i. This is algebra, the definition that you should have in, in algebra course. Okay, so the function is going to be increasing. A function is going to be increasing. If you go from left to right, the value of the function getting bigger and bigger. You see the x2 is bigger than x1, so f of x2 is also bigger than f of x1. This is going to be increasing, and uh, similarly, I give you both definition that I example. Similarly, okay, if x1 is equal less than x2, then okay, this is the other way around. If f of x1 is greater than f of x2, you see, you change the direction. These are the same, but this one is different. So this means you go from left to right, the value of the function getting smaller because the x2 is bigger than x1, but f of x2 is less than x2, x1. So if this is going to be the case, then f is going to be, is, uh, okay, is a decreasing function. Decreasing, okay, function function on the interval i. Okay, that's increasing and the and the decreasing show you what would happen. Can you see look at this one. We got this function up, 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 up. So we go from left to right, the value is going to be up, up, up. This is increasing function. If you get those points that I talk about it, you see, if you pick the x1 here, this is going to be x1, and this is going to be f of x1. And if you move forward, you get another point. You see, look at this one. This is going to be your x2. So this part is f of x1, and this part is f of x2. So as you move on, you know that if you go to the right, the, the number is going to be bigger and bigger. So your x2 is bigger than x1, and as you can see, f of x2 is also bigger than 
f of x1, okay? So this is x1 is less than x2, implies f of x1 is less than f of x2. So that would be increasing function, increasing function, or if you like, you know, and increasing function. We are going to change it to derivative in a minute. But you have some problems in your book. The graph is given to you, and they ask you whether this graph uh, represents an increasing function. This is how we're going to look into it. Up, up, up. So it's increasing. The other case, let's so look at this one. It's the other way around. It's down, 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 you see. It's going down. So if you pick those points that you pick over there, you see, if this is going to be x1, this is going to be f of x1. But if you can pick the x2, you see, you're going down. So that would be an x2. So x1 is, x1 is less than x2. But if you like, you see bad f of x1 is the other way around. Because the f of x1 is up, up there. So this is going to be a decreasing function. A decreasing. Okay, that's going to be decreasing. Okay, sorry about this one. It's a decreasing, decreasing function. So it's up, 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 increasing, down, down, down decreasing to get these functions. In algebra, we, we find the difference. We do, you know, common denominator algebra case uh, to prove it. But in calculus, we have the derivative to check, okay? So uh, we find the derivative of the function and then just we put them, you know, we, we put them together, okay? Uh, so, uh, so what is going to be the 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 connection with the with the derivative? Okay, let me give you that uh, theorem, and then we give a break, and we come back, and we do it. So we are ready to because we would don't want to do the algebra, we want to do the calculus. So if the derivative of the function, if the derivative of the function is positive, we say the function is increasing. If the derivative of the function is negative, we say the function is decreasing, okay? So we have to find the sign of the f prime to find out whether the function is going to be increasing or decreasing. So this is a kind of nice theorem, okay? So that would be a preview for the first derivative test. So the theorem. This is, uh, we test that to see if it's going to be maximum, if it's going to be increasing or decreasing. Okay, so if you have a function, if a function, it must be differentiable, of course. If a function f is differentiable, it means you can find the derivative of the function. If a function f is going to be differentiable, of course, it's going to be differentiable on the interval on the domain. Interval i, whatever it is. Okay, if a function is differentiable on interval i, okay, uh, then two cases. Case one. Okay, case one, if Derivative is positive if f prime of x is greater than zero for all x in the interval. Remember that's the slope. Bigger than zero is up, up, up. So in that case, the function is increasing. Then f is increasing. Okay, is increasing on i. 
So you have to check the sign of the F prime to see if it's going to be increasing or decreasing. Okay, that's a positive. Case two, if F prime of X is going to be negative for all the X in I. Okay, if it's going to be negative, then F is decreasing. decreasing on I. Okay, just think about this slope. Positive up, up, up. Negative down, down, down. There is a third case. Okay, it's nice to know the third case. You don't need the third case now. Let's see if we can answer this one. What would happen if it is zero? If f prime of x is zero for all x in i, what can you tell us about the function? Any suggestion? You have a function whose derivative is zero. What sort of function is this one? Anybody? Horizontal. Uh, yes, when we get the horizontal, so what type of function is this? Can you give us the equation of the function? When it's horizontal, if a line is horizontal, what's the equation of the line, for example? Yes, yes, but no, in, in algebra, if a line is horizontal, we know that if the line is horizontal, of course, the derivative is zero. Would it be a polynomial? Which one? Polynomial? No, 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 not polynomial. What is the equation of this line? Zero. Zero is one choice. Yeah. A constant. Would it be infinite? No, no, a constant function. You see when the line is horizontal, remember, the equation of this line is y equal to two, y equal to the negative five, y equal to the seven. When the line is horizontal, okay, when the line is horizontal, you know that the equation of the line must be something like y equal to the five, y equal to the six. So it's a constant function. If the derivative of the, of course, it can be proven calculus, okay? If the derivative of one function is always zero, this function is like something like f of x equal to the five. You know that derivative of five is zero. f of x equal to the negative seven. Derivative is zero. f of x equal to the one third is zero. So if this is going to be the case, then it's no good. This f is a constant function. If this is going to be the case, then f is a constant function. Constant. Function. You see, when it's a constant, it's always the same. So you cannot say that it's increasing or decreasing. Because for increasing or decreasing, you must go up, 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 or you may go down, down, down. But when it's, you know, when it's zero, you cannot have those type of ideas. It's a great theorem, of course. It needs to be proved. I'll just give you an idea so that you can, you know, can feel it if you like. Because when you say f prime bigger than zero, less than zero, so there is going to be a case that f prime would be zero. So what would happen in that case? So in that case, the function is going to be a constant function. Uh, so this would uh, give us a tool. So this means in order to find out whether the function is going to be increasing or decreasing, we have to find the derivative of the function and determine the sign. We need a chart. So what you are going to do is you find the derivative of the function. You let it equal to the zero, like the, the way you determine the sign of the polynomial in algebra. Then you find out whether it's going to be maximum or a, whether it's going to be increasing or decreasing. Uh, okay. And so I can give you an example on this one now, but there is a bonus. We are looking for a bonus, not this one. The bonus is going to be 
how this would help us to get the, okay, remember we have critical values, to get the maximum or a minimum ideal. So we do, okay, because in order to do the max minimum, you have to go through this one. So the conclusion of this is going to be the theorem that I talk about it. What is the first, you must know this one by name, first derivative, first derivative test. Something that they call is first derivative test. This is what you give you, will give you the relative maximum and the relative minimum. So what is this test? You see, the first step that 50% that I told you is always the same. You want to find the relative maximum, the minimum of your function. First thing to do, you have to differentiate it. You find the f prime, you let it equal to zero, you get your critical numbers. So you want to know what is going to be the situation for these critical numbers. Which one would give you the maximum and which one would give you the minimum. We use the first derivative test. So what's first derivative test? There you are. Suppose you have a function. Okay. Suppose f is, it must be differentiable, of course. f is a differentiable function. Differentiable function. And C is a critical number, is a critical number, okay, of, of F or for F, of F. So this means you already done the 50%, okay? You find the derivative of the function and you let it equal to the zero. So, how are we going to find out whether it's the maximum or the minimum? If this is going to be the case, the one that we talk about it. I want to describe maximum. Remember, I should go up first, then down. So that's the situation I'm going to have. If increasing, if f prime, f prime of x is positive before c for x less than c and f prime of x is a negative after c after c so it's up done then f of c is a relative okay maximum is a relative maximum. Okay, and in order to remember it, you see this is it. the situation I'm going to have. It's, uh, it's up, down. Up, down. Up means F prime positive. Down means F prime negative. Up, down, maximum. That's case one. You already have a chart, you determine the sign, so quickly you can find out. Okay, that's case one. Are you ready? Case two, describe the minimum. For the minimum, you have to go down first, then up. So down, if f prime of x is negative, down. For x less than c and f prime of x is positive after c for x greater than c okay so down up then we get a minimum then f of c is going to be what is a relative, relative minimum, that's it, relative minimum. So this is how we describe it, down, up, down, 
up. Down means F prime is negative, up means F prime is positive. You get a minimum. That's it. First derivative test. It's a very nice test. The second derivative test is easier. It's shorter. But that gives you quite a lot. Because you see, this gives you the that theorem and this one all together. So the way they are going to give you the instruction, you have to do it for the first derivative test. It takes a little bit of time uh, to do it, but it's a very nice test. I'll give you a break. We come back, we work on this one. Okay, uh, we have to have a couple of uh, different examples to see how we're going to handle this one to get the, this number. Uh, okay, we are not going to give it a second derivative test for this, you know, for coming tests. Stop here. Let's see how far we can go, you know. Because the other one, you have to prepare something else uh, to be able to do it. We prepare the increasing, decreasing over here, and this is going to be another concept, and we are not going to be hurry. We have enough to, to practice, okay? So it's almost uh, 9, 8, 40. So give it 10 minutes, we come back, and we check a couple of examples for you. Okay, and so we are done with 3.1, 3.2. This is where we give you the test. Okay, and I post the practice test for you, a take on one, and we got enough time to, you know, to, to, to go over it. So one for the final, one for the absolute max absolute mean, and this is the second one. As we go on in this chapter, you get more questions for the, okay, uh, that we repeated on the final. Okay, let's see in, the 10 minutes, so we can get some examples. Okay, see you then.
Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's see how we're going to work with this uh, theorem. Okay, so you now carefully just uh, follow the steps of how we're going to do this uh, type of problems, and you'll be you'll be fine. So this is how they are going to uh, ask you the question that you realize that you have the list. Okay, so example. You see, the example is going to be, <clears throat> that this is how we're going to start. And we want to determine, okay, determine, is the expression, determine the interval. Okay, the intervals where the function. Okay, where the, the function this is it, f of x equal to, let's uh, try this one, f of x equal to the, let's have uh, x cubed minus uh, 3x plus 1. Okay, determine where the intervals where this function is increasing, increasing or decreasing. Okay, increasing or decreasing. Then they ask you to find all possible. Okay, all possible or just all relative, relative extremal, extremal of the of the function. You see, all of them together is going to be just one question. As soon as you see this expression, you see determine the intervals where the function can increase and decreasing. Uh, this will tell you that you have to use the first derivative test. That's for future because now you don't have any other second test to, to realize they are going to be different. But uh, this is the way you are going to be, you know, you're being told. Uh, so uh, this is it. Are you ready? First thing to do, check the domain all the time. What's the domain of this function? Domain? All real numbers. All real numbers because it's a polynomial. Okay, identify the domain. Remember on those close interval that we talk about it, that uh, that was something different because the domain was already given to us, okay? But over here is domain or real numbers. So a step one, I call it 50%. A step one, you have to find the critical values. You know that they are the candidates, okay? They are going to be the candidates, so nicely differentiated, okay? Find the f prime of x, carefully differentiate. Power rules that give you three x squared minus three Highlight this one because it's going to be used. Okay, let it equal to the zero. F prime of x equal to the zero. So it's going to be three x squared minus three equal to the zero. Solve this equation. That give you three x squared equal to the three. X squared equal to the one. And x would be positive negative one. Double check, make sure you get it right. So these are going to be your critical numbers. Critical numbers is a negative one and one. You don't have to check because your domain is all real numbers. Okay, your domain is going to be all real numbers, so they are already in the domain. That would be a step one. Any question? A step two, you drop them back into the function because they are the candidates. Okay, they are going to be your maximum and the minimum. But always is the maximum value or the minimum value. Okay, drop it back into the function. So find f of negative one, which is going to be equal to the negative one cube minus three times a negative one plus uh, plus one. Okay, negative one cube would be a negative one, carefully. Okay, negative, negative, positive, so that we have positive three plus one. You simplify that, give it three. 
you highlight this number. F of negative one equal to what? Equal to three. So this is one of the candidates or the maximum or the minimum. You don't know yet. Any question? So that was negative one. Try the other one. You have to try all of them. So find F of one. F of one you substitute, so that's going to be one cubed minus three times one plus one. Okay, so it's going to be one cubed, which is one minus three plus one. So that give you now, that give you two minus three, which is a negative one. Okay, so F of one is going to be equal to what? Is equal to the negative one. So this is the second candidate. That is a step one. Any problem in this chapter that we're going to do, this is going to be your first step. 50% of the grade of this problem is going to be this one. Okay, finding the derivative of the function. You let it equal to the zero. Okay, find the critical numbers. You drop them back into the function to find the candidates. Now we have to decide to test it if you like. Now we have only one test. In future, we're going to have two. We say which tests are going to use. But for the time being, your test is first derivative test. So what we have to do, you have to give us a chart. Remember, you have to find the sign of the F prime around these points. Remember, we talk about it. Up, down, maximum. Down, up, minimum. So I need a chart, okay? This is going to be the chart. If you don't give us a chart, you are not going to get a point, okay? Because this chart is going to be used again in future. Your chart must cover the following. This is X, like the number line. The domain of the function negative infinity to positive infinity. Negative infinity to positive infinity. That's a domain. Okay, then on the second part, you are going to check the sign of the F prime, okay? And on the third line, you are going to check the sign of the, okay, just f of x, the value of the function. Okay, so the x for the domain, f prime of x derivative, f of x, the value of the function. You bring the critical numbers. Your critical numbers are negative one and one. So you put the negative one and one here, from the smaller one to the bigger one. Okay, how did you get it? you let f prime equal to the zero. So you put the zero here. You see, we partition the number line. We partition the number line around this negative one and, okay, negative one and one. And we put these zeros to show that we did this, okay. We did this, okay, these, uh, these uh, partitions, if you like. Okay, so that is going to be the, the case. Okay, so that's uh, that's going to be the case. Now, the value of the function, f of negative one is equal to three, so that gives it three. Okay, f of one is equal to the negative one. Okay, that give you, uh, that give you the, the case that we are going to have. Okay, so, so we get the f of negative one equal to three. Now, we have to determine the sign of the f prime. You see, one, two, three, in three partitions. Various method to do it. There are some shortcut from algebra or some others. Now, look at this, uh, this, this function over here, okay? So you have, uh, we have extra sun here. Okay, so, so different way to do it. Generally, generally, not for this function, okay, generally, we are going to have the f prime of x here. You see it's going to be f prime of x, which is equal to the three x squared minus three. Like in algebra, you can test some numbers if you like, to find out what is going to be the situation they're going to have. So you may test one number here, you see negative infinity and negative one. You pick a number. You drop it into the F prime. If it's going to be positive, this sign will be positive. 
If it's going to be negative, this sign would be negative. Then you have to pick one number between negative 1 and 1, and one number between 1 and positive infinity. It's one way to do it. The other way to do it, when it's a quadratic, when it's a squared, we have a theorem in algebra. When it's a quadratic and you have two solutions, between the solution, the sine of the f prime is opposite of the x squared. The sine of the x squared is positive. So the opposite would be negative, and everywhere else would be positive, positive. That's quick to check this one. Okay, if it's quadratic, if it's quadratic from algebra, if it's going to be quadratic, we get the x squared, and we have two solutions. Between the solution, the sine of the equation is opposite of the sine x squared. x squared, the coefficient is positive 3. So the opposite would be negative, positive, positive. That's quick for the quadratic. But if it's going to be anything else, you test numbers. Even you can test numbers here if you like. You see, if you pick a number between negative 1 and 1, for example. Uh, you see, like, let's, let's test if you like. We don't need to test really this one, but between negative infinity and negative one, for example, you may test a number like a negative two. So if you put the f prime of negative two here, so that give you what? Three times a negative two squared minus three. So negative two squared would be four. Four times is going to be 12. So that give you 12 minus three. Nine is a positive number. So in this area, you should get the positive here. Okay. Between negative one and one, you can test, for example, zero. If you test the zero, f prime of zero, f prime of zero, that give you what? Zero minus three, which is a negative number. So this must be negative. Or if you test something like a positive two here. Okay, if you test positive two, that give you the same thing, like the nine over here. So that would be, that would be positive. We keep these numbers for future. If you have exponential function, okay, log function, some function which is quite different, okay. And we are going to have more shortcut and then we go on, okay. I give you more shortcut, but uh, for the time being, if it's going to be quadratic. Most of the time, it's quadratic. If it's going to be quadratic with two solutions, just use the algebra between the solutions opposite sign of the x squared. X squared is positive, so this must be negative and outside the same signs. Okay, any question? So, now f prime positive, you know that when f prime is positive, the function is increasing. Increasing up. f prime negative, the function is decreasing down. f prime positive, up. You see, you have all the information that you need. So this function is increasing between negative infinity and negative one, and one and positive infinity. If you give me chart, you don't have to explain it, but otherwise you have to explain it to get these numbers. And it's going to be decreasing between negative one and one. Over here is up down. Remember up down that give you a maximum. But over here is a down up that give you the minimum. You see, this chart would give me everything that that we need. But otherwise you have to, to, to describe it to give us this information. So I just write the description to know how we read it, but you don't have to do it if you give me this chart. So the conclusion is going to be F is increasing, is increasing. Okay, it's going to be increasing on these intervals, on negative infinity, to the negative one, one interval and, and okay, one and positive infinity. That's increasing. It's gonna be decreasing, F is decreasing. Okay, it's gonna be decreasing well. Decreasing between negative one, okay, on the negative one and one. Okay, increasing, decreasing f of negative one equal to three is a relative, okay? 
is going to be a relative maximum, relative max. F of one equal to the negative one is a relative, okay? Is going to be a relative, relative minimum. You see, these are the report of your table. But if you give me this table, everything is nicely done to get you know, to get there, to get this through it. Uh, later on, I will tell you how we find these two numbers here. You see? If you have these two situations you're going to have, everything can be done from the bottom one and you don't have to follow these, you know, these ideas here. You see the negative infinity here? You know it from your algebra that if you want to find the end behavior of the function, we call it. You see, look at this one, this is x cubed. Negative to the third power would be negative. So in future, this would be a negative infinity. And positive infinity, positive to the third power would be positive. Look at this one now. Then you compare these numbers. You see, this is a negative infinity and three. So you're going from a negative number to a positive number. So the function is increasing. And this is three to the negative one. You go from a positive number to negative number, it's decreasing. From negative one, you go to the positive and it's, it's you know, increasing. So, you know, you don't have to test. I mean, you get this information free, but uh, we are going to have some, you know, a couple of cases that you need to be prepared for it. You have all the, all the possible methods to be able you know, to take care of this function, okay? So this is how we're going to do it for me, okay? Some people, they don't do any tests. They say, oh, I don't need any tests. I have two numbers, three and negative one. So f of negative one equal to three is a maximum. f of one equal to negative one is a minimum. No, I can give you several examples that you find these numbers and these numbers, nothing to do with the maximum and the minimum. Remember, they are the candidates. The table will tell you whether you get the maximum or the minimum. Without this table, it's not the case. Yes, you may, you may be able to apply to the 10 problems, but I can give you one problem that would be impossible for you to use this method. Okay, that's why we call it the first derivative test. Okay, it's a very nice test. Just try to get all the, okay, all the details to get these, these uh, numbers. Okay, to get this uh, number over here. F prime is zero because they are critical numbers, that's it. So we put F prime equal to the zero to get the one and negative one. You see, this is how we get a positive negative one. So we put the zero for the F prime to show that the way you are going to now partition it to get these numbers. Any question? We will give you another one to get these numbers. Okay, it's a two steps problems really. The first step is that the 50% that you did it before, you find the F prime, let it equal to the zero to get the critical numbers, okay? Then you put the critical numbers back into the function, then you have to test it. This is the testing part. That you have to have these tables, so X, F prime X, F of X, and you put the critical values then they are going to be zero at the critical values, and then you test some numbers. F prime positive, it's up, increasing, negative, it's done. You see, in future, we can graph it even. You see, this is the graph up. You see, look at this one. This is going to be the graph of the function. So that's why this table is going to be, is going to be very, very popular. Let me see if I can give you another one quickly. Any question? So, be patient and nicely can be done. Uh, so the one that I wanted to see that you need that uh, testing ideas. Okay, it's gonna be mostly polynomial in your case. When we teach calculus one, two, three, of course the radical function is the tricky one, but you don't have them. So let's uh, quickly try to get some part of this one too. Okay, the same thing, but for this function, okay. So uh, let's uh, call this one uh, number one, the function. So I don't have to repeat it. So I'm going to call this one uh, number two. This is again, very famous function. 
it's x to the fourth. I want to give you more numbers. That's why I picked this one. Okay, x to the fourth minus 18x squared plus one. Very popular case, same question. Okay, so we start with the domain again, solution. You know that it's a polynomial, so the domain of the function is negative infinity, positive infinity, that's a domain. You differentiate it, f1 of x equal to, now you know why we were working on these problems. Okay, uh, it's going to be negative uh, 36x, that's your derivative. Double check the derivative, make sure you don't make any mistake here. You keep it, you let it equal to the zero. There is an equation that you have to solve. Okay, it's cubed. So you have to use factoring to solve it. What's common factor? 4x. Four 4x, four yes, 4x out. So that gives us x squared minus nine. You see, then we have to factor x um, squared minus nine, which is going to be x minus three times x plus three equal to the zero. That's more exciting because we have three critical values. So you did for x equal to the zero. We did this one before, your x would be zero. Okay, it's going to be zero over four, which is zero. So you have zero as one of your critical numbers. Then for the other, x minus three equal to the zero. So x would be three. And x plus three equal to the zero. So x would be negative three. Okay, so you have three critical numbers. So your critical numbers are going to be negative three, zero, and three. This is the first step. Any question? Next, drop them back into the function and then test them. Okay, we have three numbers. Check f of negative three into the function. Remember that's your function, x to the fourth minus 18x plus one. So it's gonna be negative three to the fourth minus 18 negative three squared plus one. Negative three to the fourth would be a positive 81. Negative three squared would be nine. So it's a negative 18 times nine plus one. So that gives you 81 minus 18 times nine. It's like two times 81. It's going to be, okay. I think it's a 162 plus one. Okay, and this is going to be negative 81 plus, uh, okay, negative 81 plus one, which is going to be negative 80. Okay, so you have f of negative three is equal to the negative 80. Yes, it's correct. You subtract these two that give you negative, oh, I'm sorry, yes, that's correct. 81, yes. So that's the first part. Any question? If you would f of three, that give you the same thing because they are all the same. So if you substitute f of three, that give you negative 80 again. Okay. Then you have to check the zero. So if you put f of zero, f of zero, you see the x part will disappear. So that give you zero plus one, which is equal to one. So we get f of zero equal to one. There you are. These are your candidates. Your candidates for the maximum and the minimum. Okay, so we need a chart. Get your chart. They call it chart for f prime. X, remember f prime of X, and the f of X, f of X. 
So the domain of the function negative infinity to positive infinity, you bring the critical numbers, we have three. Negative three, zero, three. Negative three, zero, three. How did you get it? You let f prime equal to the zero, you see. Zero, zero, zero. Now the value of the function, f of negative three is a negative 80. f of zero is one. f of three is the negative 80. Okay, on the first part, just the x's. On the second part, you put the zeros because they are critical numbers. On the last part, you just put the value of the function. So, now you have to determine the sign. You can get a shortcut for yourself. Between these numbers, you compare them together to have a, you know, to have some part of the signs. You see from negative in negative 80 to one. From negative, from a negative number to a positive number, it's a kind of increase. So this function would be increasing here. When it's increasing, the sign of the F prime is positive. You see, that will help you as a shortcut. Question? So from negative number going to the positive number is increase, but from one going to the negative number, this is going to be a decrease. Okay, so this must be negative. So you have to check a number on these two intervals only, you see, that will help you. You cannot use that quadratic one that we talk about it because your F prime is what? You see your F prime is cubic, you have to test numbers. So this is your F prime. You have to test two numbers. You need one here and one here. Okay, give us a number between negative infinity and negative three. A number between negative infinity and, yes, negative four, very good, negative four. So we check the negative four here, okay. Check the, the negative four. So what's gonna be F prime of negative four? You want the sign only, okay. So that's gonna be four times a negative four. Q minus six times a negative four. Okay, negative four cube would be negative 64. So that give you four times 64, four times a negative 64. And this would be a 24. It's gonna be a negative number. Okay, you don't need the value. You just need to know what it's gonna be, you know, whether it's a negative or positive. Okay, it's, it's clear it's a negative because that give you, okay, 246 plus 24, it's negative. So it's negative, that will tell you that, so this is going to be negative. So the function would be decreasing here. Okay, and if you put the positive four here, you get the same thing. Oh, let's see. If you get a positive four, you have to check F prime of four. So that gives you four times four cubed minus six times four. This would be positive this time because that gives you 246 and 24, minus 24. Isn't it? Yes, what's that? Isn't the F prime of X supposed to be 4X cubed minus 36X? Oh, is it 36? Oh. Is it 36? I didn't see it. 36, okay, 36. Let's see if it's gonna be changing everything or anything. So what is this number now? 36, uh, I think it would be unchanged. Yes, because four times 36 is what? Four times uh, six would be 24. Okay, 12, 40. yeah, we, we are safe. That's gonna be 144, okay, 134. It's gonna be negative. And this is gonna be 144. Okay, everything would be the same. Okay, so uh, this is going to be positive, so this is positive here. And the positive means up. You see, you have to check, I'll tell you that you have to be prepared for it. So for this one, you have to test the numbers. 
now it's it's nice you see it's nicely done decreasing increasing it's a down up this is minimum up down it's a maximum down up this is minimum so this means f of 3 equal to the negative 80 is a relative minimum f of 0 equal to 1 is a relative maximum the function is increasing in this interval. You don't have to write it down if you just give us the chart. So it's going to be decreasing between negative infinity and negative 3 and between 0 and 3. And then it's going to be increasing between negative 3 and 0 and the 3 and positive infinity. And in future, nicely we can graph it. See the graph? This is going to be the graph of the function in future. You know, it's going to be coming when we get your next uh, next quiz. So it's a very popular case, this one. Because the algebra involved is nice because we get three critical values, okay? Three critical values, so you got to be patient uh, to, to go through it and make sure you don't miss any signs here. Because if you miss it, so from the maximum, minimum, you know, it would be, situation would be, would be different. And that's it. Any question? So we are ready to give you the test uh, number two. Okay, I post the practice test for you. So on Thursday we practice. Uh, I will try to finish your quiz so you can have your quiz to see what you missed on the quiz. So I finish that one and bring it back for you on Thursday. So that we have the idea on the quiz and even I publish, I post the solution to that one so that you, you'll be happy about the quiz. And then uh, this part is not bad, it's not difficult. It takes time. Uh, so uh, do you have, uh, you know, you've got two main problems tonight really to think about it and know the difference. Uh, this, uh, this is used for the relative max and the relative mean together with the increasing, decreasing. But the absolute max, absolute minimum was a different story. Remember, that was only on a closed interval. No test is needed for that one. Some people, they make a mistake. Even they, they give us a chart for the other one. No. That was, you know, you find the critical values because the interval is closed. But for the relative one, you have to go through this one because they give you entire domain, you see. Domain is negative infinity, positive infinity. So you have to go with these uh, two different, uh, different parts. We have some nice problems on the practice one. So we got enough time to, to practice to get this one, to get one this true. Okay, after your test, we are going to give you another test. We call it second derivative test. You don't need a chart for this one. You know, the other one is, is a short one. And most of the people prepare the other one, but you have to know this one too. Okay, that's it. Any question? So we we'll see you on Thursday for practice Professor, test I have a number question. two. Yes. Um, you said there will be the another test after this one. This is test two. We are going to have a test three and the, oh, which test? You mean the derivative test? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we are um, not going to discuss it before the test number two. Oh, okay. Thank you. 